Welcome everybody to another episode of our comprehensive training series called SCP Knowledge Booster. For this video I have the pleasure to hand over to you today's presenter Ralf, who will talk about the next hot topic with the SCP Sesame backup software. 3, 2, 1, launch! Hello everybody and Welcome to our session SAP HANA Knowledge Booster. My name is Ralph. Um, some of you already know me. Uh, I'm one of the pre-sales guys at SAP and today I'll show you a few slides, few informations about uh, SAP HANA and afterwards um, we're doing a live demo on our system just to get you uh, uh, inside view with a few more um, informations and updates, especially technical updates with our new uh, configuration script and um, how to configure it in the best appropriate way that you use the HANA backup with um, all the benefits and all the new features that we have integrated. Cool. So let's go ahead with the slides. Firstly, benefits with SAP. So um, what can you do with uh, the SAP HANA agent? Of course, first of all, fairly simple like it is always when you use SCP Sesame. Um, you just have to install a client. You don't need to install any additional components, any additional um, um, programs or libraries or stuff like that. So just download the client, install the client and you're ready to go to do your uh, HANA backup configuration. Uh, it is certified for uh, the backend API um, from SAP, of course certified on all um, hardware architectures and also for all um, hypervisors that are certified for that. So also in that case, no limitations, pretty simple. And support all HANA setup options, so uh, even yeah, clustered environment, all that stuff or pacemakers, whatever you have, you can use that together with SAP. Simple to remember. Just in every configuration, SAP is suitable. Um, the product itself, SAP Sesame, has a few benefits also for you because uh, with the new version we have integrated REST API and command line interfaces so you can monitor everything out of the box and automate all the processes um, for enterprise environments, very important. Um, we have an online documentation a documentation where you can directly get the informations, uh, technical informations from our wiki. So uh, even for that, you don't have to search for something or download documents or stuff. Just go to the website and that's it. Quality, quality support out of Germany. Um, we have a 24-7 support uh, in the New York Munich. So if you have something um, needed, you can get 24-7 German speaking, English speaking, support uh, and uh, yeah, Bavarian speaking. <laughs> um, regarding the market, flexible pricing, future proof, made in Germany, satisfied customers, all that stuff. What should I say? Yeah, of course, uh, um, pretty competitive against other vendors. That is quite clear with the, let me say, uh, focus on really, really high quality for that product. This is um, one of our latest success stories. Uh, you can also have a look on the success stories on our website um, on uh, www.sefsoftware.com. You will find uh, another uh, more case studies for, uh, especially with focus on SAP HANA environments. In that case, this is uh, the sub UCC, the University Competence Center, where they uh, integrated the uh, SEP CESAM backup components pretty fast, pretty efficient, and of course they have the whole landscape. That means they have HANA, they have uh, the, the R3, the NetWeaver stuff, with DB2, MaxDB, so all uh, pretty much in the enterprise environment with Catalyst stores. Um, and this was a pretty, let me say, straightforward uh, implementation. So if you want to have a look later on, uh, don't hesitate to have a look on our case studies for that. SAP. More than just backup for SAP HANA. So um, what's integrated? Often the question comes up, hey, uh, what's my benefit? What, wh why should I use backup software? I can also do my crons and scripts and all that stuff. So a few benefits in that case for me. Of course, you have integrated disaster recovery. 
which is very important. That means not only the database is covered with the data protection system, also the whole system is covered, especially in cluster environments for large physical servers. Very important that you have a bare metal recovery directly integrated. Next point is, uh, as I mentioned it, you have uh, support for Red Hat virtualization and VMware virtualization for um, HANA databases. So this is also completely available out of the box. It is certified um, completely for the backend for, uh, for the for the S4 stack, also the R3 stack. Um, SAP ASE is also supported. That means we have also uh, an SAP ASE module available. As you know that um, uh, in the near future, most of the people will have a combination of SAP HANA databases uh, combined with the SAP ASE databases for uh, yeah for testing purposes, for, for uh, quality assurance development, that stuff. Um, maybe to lower the costs also, um, there'll be a combination of these two databases. So completely covered, which is extremely important for the future. Uh, scale up, scale out environments, as I mentioned it, uh, also the large environments are completely covered. We also have um, pretty good cases for that, uh, that you can have a look on how that works, especially in the service provider environments. Um, next point for me, very important point for me now on the right side is uh, the support of parallel HANA backend channels. The parallel HANA backend channels um, came up with uh, the latest HANA release and um, boosted up the performance quite a lot. So uh, some of you maybe know that from other enterprise databases like Oracle um, that you have uh, the possibility to fork all the, the um, channels a bit more to um, grant a maximum throughput ratio and put the data on disk, tape storage, cloud, whatever you want uh, with the maximum performance as you have uh, uh, these bundled streams then um, using all of the um, um, network performance that you can get and all of the um, IOPS that you can get from your systems. HANA Studio and HANA Cockpit integration, quite clear. That means in case of a restore, uh, normally the SysDBA has nothing to do with the backup software, uh, don't have to ask the backup admin for something. He can really go straight forward directly in the studio, uh, um, perform a restore, a point in time restore with the backup catalog, which is synced. So this is also an important point um, that he don't, needs any extra knowledge or any extra um, in-between communications, long ways or stuff like that when he wants to perform perform a point-in-time restore of the HANA databases of the instances um, or, or, or in B1 words it was would be a, a schema, the tenants, uh, can be done directly from the system he's working with. Um, Sub B1 user-based licensing is also a point, um, um, mostly in the B1 environments, it's important that they get also, let me say, a bit more uh, customized um, um, licensing model for them, more user-based models uh, uh, to calculate with that. Um, as I mentioned before, the HANA clusters, of course, and uh, Last two points for me also very important, the housekeeping. That means uh, that we have an integrated um, um, syncing for the housekeeping now available and multi-tenancy support, multi-tenancy support now um, sync for HANA B1 was the latest release, I, was, I think it was 10 or something, uh, also uh, for HANA B1, uh, the multi-tenancy support. So, I mentioned that before uh, in the in the first part of the slide with the bare metal restore uh, with the system recovery, which is very important for me because when you talk about let me say provided HANA services um, 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 application as a service, normally okay, of course your your uh, database should be covered and protected quite clear. But uh, if you work with that or if you are a service provider or if you use it in your own data center, of course, you have to cover all the other parts 
uh, except the database and log files. That means uh, the complete system. Um, the complete system means could be a physic, could be a hypervisor, uh, could be a clustered environment. All of that has to be covered, has to be protected also um, by the backup software to uh, reach the lowest um, RPOs uh, and the uh, lowest RTOs that you uh, have in your SLAs. So very important, please keep that in mind. It's often um, forgotten that you just uh, cover databases, log files and don't care about the systems because you are not, let me say, so familiar with the infrastructure or you're not so into it regarding the infrastructure, but this is especially for me a very important part um, that you can really get as fast as possible uh, back in working status in case of a disaster. Um, from the technique, it's quite simple. So that means normally you have a HANA database, uh, you use uh, uh, SQL commands, HTTP SQL commands, and then you can say, I perform a backup of the database. But of course, then the database is dumped on the same disk or dumped on the same system. So you lose uh, a lot of storage, quite clear. And I would say uh, in, 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 in the beginning uh, of, of um, in-memory databases with SAP HANA, most of the problems that the customers had when, when I talked to them and, and and they told me hey yeah one of my biggest problem is that I have a lot of HANA systems we have the cron jobs we are dumping the files and we are doing the backups but then um, it could happen because nobody looks at it because there is no active monitoring or there's something missing or whatever what else um, um, the problem is that uh, the disk runs out of space and the HANA database stops completely directly and this is one of the, let me say, biggest pain points in the beginning when um, we faced the challenge to uh, integrate a proper backup product for SAP HANA databases. So managed by the HANA Studio, uh, this is quite clear. So normally most of the parts are done by the HANA Studio and then combined with cron jobs. That's the typical approach what you have in the beginning. That means, okay, um, um, the admins are creating some cron jobs, but can you see the cron jobs in the HANA Studio? Can you see um, what happened in the past? Do you have a proper backup catalog? Do you know where the backups st are stored? All that stuff. So especially that uh, leads, let me say, to uh, not a really proper 100% good combination regarding uh, uh, administrative efforts. What we did now, we integrated SAP CSAM. That means uh, we integrated the scheduling, the monitoring, um, the transport of the data, the storage. So everything is then managed by SAP. Uh, fairly simple, straightforward. That means um, you have an active monitoring. You can be sure that you're not running out of space, that you have uh, uh, all the logs and the backups available that you need, that you can uh, grant your uh, uh, RPOs especially and therefore um, we created a module and uh, the so-called SAP HDB um, backend connector connects to the HANA database and then transports the data, the backup data with our integrated multi-streaming technology which is of course pretty important when you talk about HANA, HANA parallel backend streams combined with our multi-streaming to, to boost the performance um, to the desired storage device. This is very important. So we don't have any staging in between. We don't need any disk space on the HANA system itself. So the data is then directly transported to the storage device to save space. And of course, in large environments, you can also um, um, connect to um, let me say some cloud providers, S3 cloud storages, or uh, use that in large scale uh, data centers, cloud environments. You can combine that with our integrated deduplication technology. Then the data is directly uh, deduplicated inline dedup with uh, uh, RUM based inline dedup. That means on the fly with all the multi, uh, multiple streams that are uh, reaching the backup target, which is uh, extremely efficient. So to wrap that up, that means administration is reduced to really, uh, uh, let me say, 
uh, a few minutes per day uh, for the monitoring of that stuff. Retention um, of the backups. That means um, all that staging, the migrations, the copies, um, um, the storage, everything is managed by SAP CISOM, so you don't have to take care about the retentions as uh, you have to configure that one time and then uh, it's up and running. The scheduling is also managed by SAP CISOM. That means you don't have to create your cron jobs. You don't have to manage your cron jobs and, and, and take care about that stuff. Therefore, you can just easily create the schedules uh, in the CISOM environment and then everything is uh, also automatically up and running without any uh, interruptions, uh, except some systems are offline or stuff like that. Then, of course, you have to look at it, but the cool part on that is hey alerting function is also integrated that means uh, you get an alert you have to look at it and that's it um, the migrations the staging that means also copies of the copies the grandfather father son principle uh, is available the inline deduplication is available um, what I mentioned a replication is also available that means we are also able to uh, create mirrors to replicate storages to different locations um, to, to ease that up. Uh, this is a 24-7 ongoing um, system that means uh, if you have changed blocks on one side, the other side is then uh, directly updated. The disaster recovery integrated bare metal recovery, in that case with rear relax and recover. So we work together with the uh, rear community in that case as we part of it. Um, that works also on uh, other architectures. That means also for uh, enterprise architectures with IBM Power, as an example, different LPAS multi SAN uh, connections. We have experience with that. Even there, it works now pretty good. Uh, so that is also directly available. The reporting, what I mentioned, is available. You can also create your own reports. You can, um, let me say, customize your reports brand your reports um, as you can use our open available REST API for that uh, to create your own look and feel. The same for the monitoring. The monitoring uh, can be done via the web um, based UI now. So there we have uh, extreme cool available dashboard monitoring function, everything. So you just need a browser, nothing else to connect to the SESAM system. Uh, to have that directly available. And of course, <clears throat> consolidation is uh, yeah, the punch word for that. That means all these parts are then consolidated in one software. Not only uh, the backup, all that automation, all the other parts are directly available with the CSUM backup software. And this is for me the biggest benefit that you, in the end, as a SysTBA, as an administrator, um, are on the safe side and can save your time for uh, all the backup and restore stuff that you have to manage. The installation uh, is quite simple. You can download the packages from sapsoftware.com slash download. Uh, please, when you download the packages, just register yourself for a demo uh demo trial that means you have uh, 30 days of uh, trial completely free everything um, available out of the box and you get also uh, demo installation support when you register for the software um, the packages on hana that is just a client package what you have to install um, configure the hana server as a sub client blah -de blah -de blah um, to be honest, I will show you that directly uh, uh, live in the demo land. It's easier for me. Okay, so um, backup and restore. The important parts for me, of course, we use the backend interface. That's the reason why we certified. Um, we support multi-tenant environments on HANA uh, S4 and also now um, on HANA B1 is the latest version. That means you can restore a single schema now or you can restore single tenants, what was not um, um, possible in the past. Uh, we integrated also in the Slash for a sub program. Um, we support productive HANA databases on VMware and Red Hat virtualization. So also certified for that and the parallel backend channels, what I mentioned before. Uh, in case of the restore, 
Uh, you can do that via cockpit or via studio, point in time, of course, and of course, single tenants, single schemas. And now also integrated the HANA housekeeping. This is the very important point for me because the HANA housekeeping is one of the parts uh, that we're missing in the past. For most backup vendors, that means we keep a sync of the backup catalog in the HANA studio or cockpit with our backup software. So if you delete some backups in the studio, um, um, the backups will also be as a, it, it, it will it'll kept in the sync. So you don't have any, um, let me say, backups in the backup catalog visible that are not available anymore uh, in the backup software itself. Cool. So uh, the last part is now a short live demo. So I will just show you how to work with that system and um, give you a short view of what you have to do uh, to configure such a HANA backup. So let me just switch to my remote system here. So what you can see, let me say, assume we have installed the client on the HANA system, then we have to add the HANA system to our environment. In my case, it's uh, this system, my test system called Subhanix 2, which is just added as a client. So I'm pretty sure now when I say uh, create a new backup task that I'm able to browse the system. And when I'm able to browse the system, uh, I can create the backups that I need. As an example, what I had before, of course, the Linux BSR backup is an important backup for me when we talk about a uh, physical system to have bare metal recovery integrated. Then um, you have to configure some additional backup tasks. That means at least we need a uh, backup for the HANA system DB for the first tenant with the backup task HANA. So that can have a name that you decide to, to choose for that. The same for the log files and then I have another backup for my global config files and local config files uh, in case you have a clustered environment global no, um, for that system also. And of course, in the case of a physical system, I have an all backup of all the data of that system. So normally, uh, if it's a virtual machine, you just need the, uh, the tenants and the logs and the config files. That's it. Then you have configured the system completely um, for the backup tasks. In case of HANA, um, we're doing an external backup. That means we trigger the backend API on the client side. And therefore, we need one additional point. We have to create um, so-called command events. That means when you have a look here in the configuration command, uh, it's, it's fairly simple. We have local scripts on the client and therefore we have to create a command event. Let's assume we take the system DB, we take uh, for the system DB a full backup. So we can do full backups and differential backups. And we don't have to configure additionally the log backups because the log backups are automatically uh, triggered by the backend API from the client side. And this is mostly, let me say, um, um, related to the HANA database itself. How many transactions, when is the HANA database able to, let me say, truncate a log and put a log. Um, normally the, the standard is every 15 minutes, but uh, this can be configured in the HANA studio. Have a look on this, uh, on this command event. It's quite simple. So opt sesam bin sesam is the path on the client side where we have our so-called SBC HANA script. With that HANA script, we can choose what we want to do in that case minus b for backup minus l for level full backup minus u for the user in that case a backup key because we have a user key store and then uh the system db tenant so in that case uh, uh the notation like you know it with the sit instance and everything and this is all you need to start the backup and this command event can be used then later for the schedules. Okay, um, the schedule, let's have a look at the schedule, is also quite simple. So you just create a schedule, in this case, Subhana database is full on the, on the weekend, every, uh, on every day, uh, 4 p.m. in the night. That means this is the schedule, and then I add the command event to the schedule. 
in that case, as you have seen it before, the system DB full command event. That's everything I have to do to be sure that my HANA database is backed up every uh, night at 4 p.m. as a full backup. Next part is, of course, we have to prepare the system once a time. To prepare the system once a time, it's fairly simple. I go to my HANA server. Let's go to um, my CSUM environment, uh, my, my CSUM directory, in that case to my binary directory. So this is uh, opt CSUM bin CSUM and run the subhana installation script. In that case, it's SM. This is, this is now a very important part as we have now the new installation script, install subhana2. This is extremely important because we have one for the old versions, which is called SM install subhana, and we have uh, one for the new versions, SM install subhana2. Just to keep that in mind, tip from my side, if you have a Sapana B1 um, older than version 10, use the old script for everything else. Uh, also for every HANA uh, up from 2.0, HANA S4 2.0, use SM install Sapana 2. You have some very good examples here um, how to use the script. And what the script is doing in the background is just creating the uh, and, and configuring the environment and creating the so-called utility files. That is what happens with that script. So in my case, I can give you an example. We talked about the system DB, what I have. And in my case, uh, let me just mark that for you. This is just an example here. Uh, wait a second. Um, Oh, I didn't have the. I didn't have my own example here now. Okay, easy for that. So um, it's quite simple to configure. That means uh, we have the the example here with the standard example. Let's take that one. Um, you have to use sm install subhana with um, additional commands. Let's take that one here. That's easier. Um, you give them with minus s uh, the sid the sid with minus e the instance. So that could be, as an example, the typical case would be uh, minus S, uh, HDB, minus E, uh, zero, zero, minus U, backup user. Um, the backup user, that means um, the key for the root user. In that case, what we normally um, um, assume is that you have a user key store on the system running, which makes absolutely sense and is supported. Minus D. The tenant, the system DB in that case, and this is now important, minus J. This is actually HANA system DB in that case. This is actually the name of the task that you have created before in the SESAM GUI. So in my case, it would be, have a look here, task by clients, SAP HANIX. Take the one for system DB. It would be that one. So this is the first part, the name, and the second important part here in the creation is minus M for the media pool. Because what we use as a, a target, so when we get the, the backend streams from the source, it has to be stored somewhere on the target, and the target is the name of the media pool that we have to store the data. And of course, minus C, the last part, uh, the name of the backup server. Then everything is created in the background. That means uh, the configuration uh, in the uh, backup environment and the utility files, all the parts. So let's have a look in one of the uh, utility files. Uh, they all end with UTL. Uh, let's make it as a list. In that case, as an example, here we have the systemdb data file. And what you can see now is exactly what I described before. So here we have the parameters for backups later on, means name of the backup server, um, CSAM harness source, that means the systemdb, in that case, as I mentioned before, the example HDB, uh, SID instance number, tenant number, the source, uh, the, 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 the log file path, that means when we do a backup, 
Um, we have a local log file, of course, in case something happens, not only on the server side, and this is normally in the trace folder um, of the common um, HANA environment. And what you can see here also, uh, see some tape server, that means you can work with remote device servers and use that as a data mover. Then you have here a so-called CSM tape server or remote device server integrated. The uh, job name as defined, the CSM drive is optional, and the media pool, what I mentioned before, where we store the backups. In my case, you can see I have created separate utility files because I have one for the data, one for the logs, and one for the catalog. The only difference is that I have different SSB log file passes created for that, but they all point to the same uh, tenant, everything else is the same, and this is then done automatically by the backend when they um, perform the backups. So, last but not least, when you have configured that, you can have a look in the sub HANA Studio, just go on the system DB, then you will see um, for the configuration here, when you go to configuration, um, how that system is configured. That means uh, if you're interested in that, just have a look. That is also a tip from my side uh, to be on the safe side. Uh, have a look here in the global INI, and in the global INI you have a section called backup, and here you can see the configuration, and you can also adapt the configuration if needed. Um, what we did with uh, the configuration script in the back, background. So um, we have now here uh, a so-called utility file uh, that is used for uh, the parameter file, um, save point here, this is the most important, um, the backup part as we have it here now, HTTP system, uh, log util, data util, catalog util, as you have seen it also on the system itself. Here we have also the configuration for the parallel backend channels, which can be raised up for uh, large-scale databases. So this is also uh, done during the configuration in the background. And here, when we go to uh, the backup configuration, you can see here on the uh, configuration and backup catalog, here the backend settings, um, what is used, and for the backup catalog, um, the common backup catalog, what is backed up, what was backed up, and all that stuff is available here in the overview in the studio later on. And you can use also the studio for the uh, point in time restores. Just here by clicking on right click, backup and recovery, recover system database or recover tenant database, as I mentioned it before. As an example here, I can choose HTB or whatever, recover in the point in time, then he checks for the available backups and then he starts the recovery process. So, really straightforward configuration can be done in a few minutes on the system and this is what I uh, like to show you in the past. Um, sorry, I'm the second out of the presentation. Last but not least, SEV is also certified for IBM Power, which I mentioned before, which is very important for me because in, in enterprise environments, a lot of people also use uh, uh, Power with LPARs, and therefore, this is my uh, honest opinion. I would say uh, SAP is now uh, top-notch on the edge uh, regarding data protection for SAP HANA uh, as a data protection product. Hey. Are you impressed of what you have heard until now? Then you might be interested in gaining more information about this powerful backup software. After our SCP specialist has talked a lot about a specific backup topic, during the next roundabout four minutes, I would like to give you a short overview of the general capabilities of SCP Sesam. I'm sure you will be impressed of what is really possible with this product. This is essentially based on six strategic columns. The first and most important topic is our huge support metrics. There is an agent available for almost every operating system, database or application you can imagine. Market leaders as well as niche products, for example for mailing, exchange or copano. 
even a lot of older versions are supported because all old SAP clients are still compatible and usable with the latest SAP backup server, for example, Netware or outdated Windows versions. The second strategic focus is our strong partnership with SAP. While being two German companies, we work together from SMB to Enterprise, from Business One to S4 HANA. SAP has the most complete set of certified agents for the SAP portfolio, including NetWeaver running on Oracle or MaxDB, Linux or Windows, HANA or ASE, known as Sybase. Moreover, SAP not only supports simple HANA backup via the backend interface, but also functionalities like multi-tenancy, housekeeping, scale up, scale out, HANA studio integration, disaster recovery, and efficient performance by parallel HANA backend channels for backup and recovery. Third, we focus on our partnership with HPE. Besides the perfect fit with our SAP partnership, this means that we step-by-step -step integrate deeper into the HPE portfolio. We just released our HPE certified Catalyst integration, including Catalyst Copy and Cloud Bank Storage. More to come soon. As a fourth element, we are proud of our multi-hypervisor support. By supporting more than eight hypervisors, we are a perfect fit into every virtual environment beyond VMware and Hyper-V or in every multi-hypervisor infrastructure. Based on our Unix and Linux history, we have a strong focus on open source. This becomes apparent from our partnerships with Red Hat and SUSE, but also from the support metrics where you can find agents for open source products like KVM, MariaDB, or Postgres. Last but not least, we see the market going cloud. With our Cloud Application Protection Service products, we help you to back up your Office 365, G Suite, Salesforce, or Microsoft Dynamics environment. With Office 365, we back up the full set of features like Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, public folders, and Teams. With SAP Sesame, it is possible to run completely in AWS, replicate to a public cloud via S3, or simply use Catalyst Cloud Bank Storage and let HPE store once do the replication work. All these topics are covered in separate videos. Therefore, we can proudly state that SAP Sesame is the most powerful backup software. Well, if you are now interested in knowing more about SAP, you can find detailed information about market, sales, product and company on our webpage. Profound technical information can be found in our large Wiki online documentation. If there are any questions left, please do not hesitate to contact us via email to sales at sapsoftware.com. So, I'm pretty sure that I'll see you next time when you're back on Tube to boost your SAP knowledge again.